Hi, and welcome to the studio. Today we're going to be going through the process of creating a multi-track orchestral piece from scratch, off the cuff. Every piece of music is pure inspiration, never been composed before. So I'll take you through the entire experience from the first note to the last little piece of mix down. I'm going to show you how I set out my sessions using MIDI tracks, audio tracks and auxiliary tracks where I place my virtual instruments, reverb and delay, that kind of thing. So join me in this experience as we take it step by step through this process of creation. Uh, let me just talk you through this template. What we've got, at the top we've got our master track so when you hear things, it all shows there. We've got our auxiliaries, we've got the click track, contact, play which is from East West Sounds, that's where I play my Quantum Leap orchestras and whatnot. Omnisphere from Spectrosonics, Trillium from Spectrosonics, that's my reverb and that's my delay as separate auxiliaries. I'm going to show you how I normally go through things. See I've got a MIDI track then a WAV track. So I've got my MIDI track enabled so when I play the MIDI notes go through contact and then back out into the WAV. So what I normally do when I go to do some composing. So what I do is I'll just play a little bit of piano and see what comes out and it could be any instrument I might pick up the bagpipes for instance and have a bit of a play and just see what comes out and so today I'm just going to use a piano input monitor it so we can hear it and we'll see how we go now it's a little bit delayed I'm going to just change that quickly so there's less latency if you have a faster computer you probably won't have that problem so here I go, I'm just going to have a bit of a muck around, a bit of a play, see if there's anything cool that comes out, stands out that we can start working from. difficult. I'm really sort of not getting a real hit just yet. I mean it's feeling nice, a little bit flowy, but I'm not getting a hit just yet so I'll just have to keep on going. You know what I'll do? I'm going to change my instrument. I'm going to go into East West Play. So welcome to East West Play. Um, this is the playing engine that runs different things like symphonic choirs, Hollywood brass, Hollywood woodwinds, symphonic orchestra is uh, one of the great ones. Gypsy, Ministry of Rock, Ra, Silk, Solo Violin, Great Violin, Storm Drum, um, 
I'm yet to get Storm Drum 3, but I'm hanging out for it. Voices of Passion in the Dark Side. So, I don't know. I do like the Chimbalon in um, Gypsy. So we'll have a little look and maybe even feed it through a bit of reverb to give us a, I don't know, a uh, an open feel. Something that's a little bit more tolerant. So there we go. We've got the Chimbalon loaded. I've got it feeding in through MIDI channel 1 and back out through auxiliary channel 1 and 2. Bang. Get rid of that. So play 1. Feeding out to play 1. Coming back in through play 1 and 2. And that's how it's done. See, very, very dry. Very, very dry. So I think I'll just send it out to the reverb. This is my reverb volume. Okay, so this is also from East West, my reverb quantum leap spaces, piano hall. I don't know, piano hall, get rid of the dry signal. That'll do for now. It's just to, just to get a feel. Just crank it a little. Okay. Now, I don't even have to use this the way it's meant to be used. The cimbalon is used like a dulcimer with mallets. So it's okay, so... Sort of like that. I mean, that's not a ideal, and I'm not a cimbalon player, but uh, I can use a... Just so you can see the keys that I'm playing. Okay, that's all right. Maybe if I just do something like that, looped. Now, what is our beat? It's a lot of one, two, three, four, one. It's like that, isn't it? So let's uh, pull up our transport window where we can actually tap the tempo in and by pressing the letter T. So first of all, make sure that dude is off, the conductor, and you just press on that and it will highlight it. And so our rhythm was one, two, three, four. Like that, okay? So I'm gonna tap that in one, two, three, Four, one, two, three. So roughly 93, 92, somewhere there. I'll leave it on 93. Wouldn't hurt. Uh, just press enter to lock it in. Everything changes. Now we have a click already set up in here. This is my template. I've always got a click. So when I press go, there it is. And that's our speed. So hold down a sustain. See what it sounds like an occupier. That's better. I'm going to do that. All right. Now, I don't want to start right at the beginning. I'll start at five, but I'll just chuck it on a grid. Start at five. Put on a pre roll of one bar. It's written down there. One bar. You can just click on that and change it if you like, but I'm not going to. One bar is fine. Right, and let's do some recording and we'll just get a loop going on. Two, three, four. Okay, that'll be good for a repeat. I'm going to quantize that. Now, quantizing means locking it into a particular uh, time frame. So you can lock it into quarter notes, eighth notes. I was playing uh, quavers there, so eighth notes is what I'm looking at. And I'm just going to press apply, and all of a sudden you will see the notes go lock into place. Let's just move play out of the way for now. 
and also my send and also my transport window a little bit cleaner so I'll just undo so you can see the notes have moved back to where I originally played them I played them before the beat uh, press apply and bam locked them into place I'm happy with that that's not a problem so I'll trim it got to go into grid mode you can press F4 to go into grid mode lock it into that particular bar lock it down to that particular bar zoom out now I've got it on grid quarter note at the moment but I can go to a grid a bar hold down option and drag now if I press shuffle I can hold down option and drag this one right to the next spot hold down those two option drag hold down those four option drag now we've got uh, starting 10 seconds and going all the way through to just after three minutes there at the moment so there's plenty of room to play around so to speak so we'll go to our next instrument uh, let's just try a piano over the top let's see how that sounds but I need to send it out to a reverb too I think it's a bit dry too much pull it back yeah it's also fairly harsh but we'll see how it sounds <laughs> okay, something's happened there where it hasn't recorded my sustain. Look at that. How crappy is that? Let's just get rid of those nodes. Go right to the beginning by holding shift and scrolling up. There we go. Now it'll be sustained. Volume down a touch. And I'm going to play some piano. That's nice. I had an error message come up because my computer's just a little too slow. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to up my playback engine hardware buffer size and that'll help fix things. Right. Yeah, the piano's kind of nice. It's sort of sweet. Adds a bit of a, um, what's a happy feel? Uh, positive. It gives it a real personal feel, almost old school. It takes us back a few decades. So... Uh, especially with that particular instrument. It's like a... There's not a lot of movement. Very simple doing one line melodies. City, to keep it high.
melody line is still very, very simple. Because you want to connect. You really want to connect through simplicity. The simpler you can make it, the better. Now, that sounds complicated because there's lots of notes in a short space of time, but they're not different notes. It's not like classical crazy piano music like Rachmaninoff or something like that. We're keeping it very simple. We've got two chords. At first, we have our... I'm playing in C. And it's a C sus there. C and a C sus. And then I'm playing A minor. And then F, A minor. So I'm keeping it in the 1, 4, 5, minor 6 region. Now, I don't know if you realise, but a lot of songs that you can hear anywhere these days mostly consist of the three chords 1, 4 and 5. In the scale of C, you'd, one would be C, C major. 4 is the fourth note up on the major scale, which is F major. And then the fifth, 5, is the fifth chord up, which is G major. 1, 4, 5, 1, 4, 5. Then you add the minor sixth. That's the next most dominant chord, which is A minor. So 1, C, 4, F. I'm doing both those. 5, I haven't got that one happening yet, but I do have the minor six in there in the pit where it goes and then I have the fourth yeah okay so it's fairly open using simplicity in chords I'm just going to get rid of my pre-roll because it's annoying me okay I have two screens so if you see my mouse duck off to that side it's because I've got something like this over here onto a different screen that you can't see. Moving right along, let's do a little bit of improvisation over top of that. We'll let it play for that whole period and then we'll come in just in this next section. So on the fifth bar, we'll record some piano. I'm trying to keep it simple. there just mute that now I'm gonna um, I don't want to quantize that I'll just leave it leave it really personal some things you can quantize some things you can't like I know that that's not perfect and there are some notes that are sort of out of whack but I think it's time to oh, whoops add another instrument so I've gone down to our play number two ah you know what I didn't do didn't label. Now play two. Um, what instrument are we going to add? What instrument are we going to add? Something light? Or should there, should there be something really um, contrasting? Could there be something like a, a French horn perhaps? Let's go with uh, six French horns, long, sustain, add. We're going to Bring it in on MIDI channel 2, MIDI channel 2, and back out. And I change it to auxiliary 3 and 4. So coming in, channel 2, happy there. Input to the wav is play 3 and 4. Okay, so I've got some French horns. 
good thing about these French horns is that uh, they're very dynamic. East West do a good job on that. So they start off soft, but if you use the mod wheel, you can do things like that. And they're very dry at the moment too, so let's just chuck in a bit of reverb by pressing Option Drag. We don't need huge amounts of reverb here. Uh, later on we'll pan these around to be in the correct orchestral spots. Volume down a little I think. Take off that last note, Chimbalons. There we go. I don't know, these French horns aren't doing it for me. Choirs, let's add some choirs and we'll do some boys' choirs. Uh, vowels, ah, it's happy, so we want ah, not ooh or mm. Let's go ah, yeah, replace the current French horns, get rid of those. So we're going to go to the boys' choir. Down here they have a key switch. So you can actually choose two different variates on the way this sounds. I think for the purpose of this, I'll keep it clean. The second one's more clean. All right. And this is something that will probably have to fade in, which I'm not going to just. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll start it simple here and start building a little higher up there. Okay, so let's label it quickly. So we're looking at choir, boys, MIDI. Labeled the MIDI and the wave at the same time. I'm only recording the MIDI at this stage. Give it a little bit of a pre-roll.
It's a little bit Christmassy, isn't it? Okay, I'm holding the uh, top C on there for the whole time, making it kind of like a uh, static music. I'm just going to quantize that quickly because it doesn't need to be very humanized in terms of where they sing. I think it could use some light violins just pulsing on the top. So we're going to go with uh, our platinum strings again because they're quite good. We'll go, I don't know, 10 violins. Let's have a look and see how 10 violins sound. Mark Short. Mark Gato is just played very shortly and bouncing off the string. Uh, I'm going to add that there. Make sure it comes through on channel 3, which it does, going out on auxiliary 5 and 6. So play 3, going out to play number 3, and coming in on plug in play 5 and 6, which it is. Great, it's good to double check things. Now they are very in your face right now, we do not need them to be. So let's pull the volume down on those and we'll put them in the background a little bit by adding some reverb option drag. So that should have similar reverb to the choir. A bit more. Now, quieter again. Something like that maybe. Starting there, I will do that and I'll label it quickly. Lens short MIDI. Okay, just going to record the MIDI for now. Anyway, I'll get rid of that so you don't have to see it and you can see what I'm playing. Quantize that. One, two, three, four. So it's eighth notes. Tink. And if you want to see, you can actually, instead of clips, you can press on notes. And there they all are. I'll zoom in by holding down option and scrolling up. You can see that they're exactly in place. I'll zoom across so you can see more notes. So we've got C and E, and then C and F. So, what we have is a nice little introduction, I believe, to something. Now, at this point here, by pressing F4, we can go back to grid. At this point here, I'll press the numbers pad Enter to put in a marker, and I'll write Change. So far, it's static. The whole thing's pretty static. It's not moving anywhere very much. It's no bass to it. It's all very high. It sounds lovely and sweet. It needs sleigh bells in it or something along those lines. I won't do percussion just yet. I usually leave percussion till last. Reason is, if you can make something work really well without percussion in it, then you've succeeded. Then you can go and add percussion later on to increase that little bit more emotion, that little bit more of 
presence and feeling and punctuation. A bit more feeling, a bit more movement. But if you can get percussion working with just your non-percussive instrumentation, then you've already succeeded and everything else on top of that is a bonus. Right, let's move on. I think I'll just get rid of that because I don't need it. Um, let's take these guys. Move our grid to one bar, which it is already. Hold down Option. Take it to the change. What are we going to have there? We don't need piano at that point because it's all light. I think we need to go with something a little bit heavier and beautiful. I've gone to play four, so I'm going to my fourth play channel and I'm not sure what to add. <laughs> what should I do here? I think I should lay some feet to this thing, give it a little bit of footing. So I've got strings on here still. I will go with nine double basses, long. Don't think I'll go expressive. I think I'll just go sus vibrato add. Make sure it works. It does, which is great. Be a transition. Too quick. Let's see what we can do here. I think it needs to wait at least mm, one, two, two bars at least. transition where there's just holding on G and building. Okay, so I'll print that double bass. Okay, let's record just the MIDI. couple of things are going to happen here. I am going to just quantize it because it'll be better. Quantize. It doesn't need to be um, particularly locked into place. Now I've got some notes in here which are too loud. I played them too loud. Looks like these ones. Yeah. That's alright, you can be up there. It's kind of nice like that, it's got a little bit of a build on G. That'll work as a fade. It's fairly soft there, isn't it? What'll work well with that? I guess we just get some cellos in. Sus vibrato, add. And they'll show up here. Five, output nine and ten. Okay. Not great. 
Let's just see how we go. I might end up ditching these. I don't know about that. It sounds soppy. It sounds really soppy. Let me just put them down for now and I can change them later on. Cello mid. Cello wav. Okay, so I'm just recording the MIDI. So we've got something. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time printing this now so I can save up a bit of computer memory. I'll start there and what I'll do is I'll go through on each of my waveforms, I'll press record. Get rid of that one because I don't want to record over the MIDI. And I'll go from beginning to end and just record each of these guys. Okay, so we've just printed our web files. Theoretically, I can just trim them like this, which I will. Makes it a neater session. Hold down Option and click on the Record buttons and they'll all disappear. Bing! If I hold down Option and click on the Input Monitors, they'll all appear. Right, I might see if the choir fits. It's actually a good texture, it's a little bit uh, grainy and it's got a lot of high frequencies in it which make it feel a little bit like it's in the sky somewhat. Alright, let's lay some choirs. notes or quarter notes I did with those guys but there we go we've got some of those still don't like this cello I don't think now I'm gonna go with something that's a little bit more punchy I'm gonna pull up Trillium so Trillium is a bass module made by Spectrasonics and uh, it's lovely there we go look at that they do very very nice acoustic bass and electric bass and a lot of really great synth basses. We have our Trillion library here, and we're gonna go with something that's rhythmic. I don't know, something that's pulsing perhaps, because it's sort of a pulsing thing. Let's try a couple, just to sample them. Now Trillion, I wanna drag this up a little higher so that we're not Desert Rider. 
that's cool, except for the crappy, I wish I could get rid of that ridiculous high pitch sound. Yeah, I like it. A bit of a pulse down the bottom. I really don't like the um, high pitch section, so I am going to give us an EQ. Give it a low pass and see if I can get rid of some of that. That's probably good enough. All right. And I'm gonna start right on there, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, quantize that because it's not quite lined up. Go to quarter notes, apply. I'm gonna just print that and the bass right now. I'm gonna call it trillion because I know where I'm at. Okay, there we have it. So, uh, I do feel like we need something else to it. It's just not happy, is it? I don't know, something up high. Maybe I can just use the piano. Let's see. I'll play that loud, but it'll give us a timbre that will penetrate once we actually grab it, record it, and turn the volume down. So I'll do that down at this register rather, rather than there. Two, three, four. that because it's in the background and it needs to sort of really hit and one sixteenth notes here it needs to hit the beat so it can leave space in between the beats we need space can't clutter it so I've just quantized it I'm going to print it Boink. It's too loud right now. Lovely. Okay. And I'm going to pull it down. You can do two things. You can actually pull things down clip by clip, 
like this, grab that, pull that down, or you can go into the volume setting here and pull the volume down like that. Now the fact that it's actually, see that blue line? It means it's not reading the automation right now because I've got it record enabled. Now the blue line's disappeared. It will actually pull the volume down. Let's have a listen and see. See if that's the right level. Good. It's not overpowering the cello. Okay, so we've got some nice rhythmic function there. Okay, I'm going to find a kick and I'm going to pull up from Storm Drum 2, Old School Neve. I want to add 6, 11, and 12. Right. Yeah, I'll use it. Why not? Gonna quantize that to the quarter note. Zoom in. Yep, they're all there. So I need two more. All right, and I need to turn the volume down a little on them. I think that's starting to sound good. What we might do is we might move that by pressing the semicolon key, you can actually move your selection down, which I just did. And if you've got this little button there, yellow, you can press B to break. Break the waveform. Uh, except I want to combine those two guys. And I'm going to pull that all the way back to here. Get rid of that. So it's just got a bit of a tail end, which will finish the song up quite nicely. No. What we need to do is we need to have something in the middle here more than just that G. Okay, so what can we have in that transition? We'll just go underneath there, Chimbalong. We'll add by pressing Command Shift N, new MIDI track. If you hold down Command Shift and arrow down, you get a new one. I want to create a stereo audio track. So Command right arrow, got me stereo. Create. Boom, boom. There they are. So I'm going to go to Play Channel Seven. Come in on Plugin Play. Channels 13 and 14. Haven't got it labeled yet, but I'm thinking something like a, a harp run. You know, something like that. What do you reckon? Uh, add. So I'll pull that right back. Give, I'm going to give it a bit more reverb so it sits behind things a little more. And I do that by feeding more into the reverb through the auxiliary through the bus. All right. Lovely. Label it. Heart. And heart wave. Two, three, four. Right, so I literally just rolled my hands down over it by scrolling in. There's all my notes that I played. How cool is that? So that's cool, I'll record all that and I'll probably fade the wave in. So let's record it, print it. There it is, let it fade out.
happy with that, that's fine. I'll fade it into there, I'll cut it out at that point there, press B, fade it back in. Okay, so I'll bring that in at that point. It's too loud. And I still think it's too early, so we'll bring it over. And that lasts too long. There we go. Zoom out, we don't need that so prominent anymore. So we'll just get a bit of context and we'll hear what it sounds like now. That's good, I think. This isn't strong enough. Just at that point, I think our cello needs to be stronger here. And make this a bit more subtle. save it, get rid of play, goodbye. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom out and we're going to listen to it from beginning to end. See if there's anything that we need to change. Straight up front, I've heard the piano is a little bit out of whack at the top here. So let's just quickly, quickly fix where those notes are because I'm sure some of you have been thinking that's annoying the crap out of me. And even some of them are a little bit probably too loud. So let's have a look. Shift, scroll to move along. Yeah, that's too loud. That's better. All right, see that is in the wrong spot. I hold down, I am on grid, so I can just grab and slide and it will slot itself straight onto that bar 15. That could be there. That isn't Great, so better. So I'm just moving along and just not fixing everything because it needs to be a bit human. When it's, when it's just obvious and just feels wrong, you just move it. This one's wrong. And normally I play before the beat, which isn't great. That's good, I'm, I'm happy with that. Save, so we'll take that back now to clips and we will go from here and go right back to the first note, which is where? There. And just before it, shall press record and we'll print it. Okay, let it record, let it spin, let it spin. Pop, there we have it. Just gonna fade that down because uh, we just don't know if there's a tail into that and I don't want it to click. Save. Going back to the beginning without going too far into it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of panning, but before we do, and I should have done this initially, all these sends, they have to pan with us. So follow main panner, FMP, command, select all the ones that have a reverb send on it. And I'm going to hold down shift option which means do to all that I've selected and hit FMP. Now theoretically I can go onto any of them now and I'll have that done to them which they do. So I'm just going to show you a small picture of the way an orchestra 
is set out. I'm just going to pull it up on Google Images and drag it over. Orchestra set up. And that was very strange. Okay. Orchestra layout in images. Okay, so just to give you a bit of a look on what an orchestral layout is like, I've just got this off Google Images. You can see the things are in different positions, and if we're in the listening position of the conductor, he's the master mixer, we need to have things panned around left and right and back to front based on where they really should be sitting. So we've got our piano sitting way over here. Now this is all very creative and you don't have to do any of this at all. I'll just choose to because it gives a bit of space. Okay, so I've moved the piano panning just a little bit over to the other side. Bit of width there, so when you listen to it, it sounds a little bit to the left, which is good. Got the timbal on. Now that's an interesting little instrument. Where should we put him? Probably in percussion up here. So that's near the piano, but further up. So I'm going to give him a little bit of space around about the middle left. Now they sound together. The piano is left of it, which is good. Okay, good, good, good. I'm going to leave the harp where it is. I don't mind. It can just stay there. Uh, the next thing we have is our choirs. Now they can stay full and wide as much as they like because um, they're there for a texture and they're sitting underneath and I don't need them to be placed as such it's to give it a bit of height. Sky. So our violins, now our violins, are over here, violins one and violins two. So actually doing two notes, we're doing violins one and violins two at the same time, biting two notes. So we're going to separate it to cover in front of the piano. Uh, so we're going to go all the way left and to about there. Now they've got a fair bit of reverb in them at the moment. We don't probably need that much reverb because they're in front of the piano. You gauge depth with uh, reverb. The further back, the more reverb because obviously there's more reverberating sound hitting your ears than direct sound. The closer they are, the more direct sound you hear, so the drier it is. Let's just make sure it's not. Right, next one down the list is double bass. Now the basses are over here, up the back. So let's shift him over to that side. So to fill up a fair swathe of that area, I want it to be all the way over to the right now. Close enough. Cellos are not. Cellos are all the way, all the way over to the left and a little bit closer. So double bass has got a fair bit of reverb in it, does it? Let's have a look. Yes, it does. So quite far at the back. Our cellos are all the way over. And that can be a little closer so I can bring the reverb down just a touch. Right, Trillion, which is our bass module, that can be anywhere and obviously our kick can be right there as well. 
if I unsilo that and just listen to this first section, we're probably going to be fairly left dominant. Except for the choir. So because we're left dominant, I might bring the choir over to the right. Just to help. There we go. Now we have some space. And as for this part here, listen. Yeah, that works. See, now we're right dominant. And our choirs are on the right. Because it's a texture, I can get away with this, but what we can do is we can actually move it by going to the pan, all types. So at the moment, it's all happy and mostly on the other side. But I want to, for this section here, change it over so it's fully on that side and partly up there. Okay, so it's swapped sides. So the choir's got a lot of left to it now. Yeah, fair bit of left there. Okay, I just need to record this down and then I can bounce it. And that is too loud. I just want it to be a pulse. Okay, now what we can do is what's called the bounce. So I highlight the section that I want to be recorded. I'm fairly happy with where things are panned and uh, mixed at the moment, so I'm just going to press all of those. I want it to stop recording at that point, start recording. Let's just give it a little bit of space beforehand as well, just so there's a gap to play with. And I'm going to go Command Option B. Now, output 1 and 2 is where we need to go. 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. I usually do that if I'm doing it for a film or a TV because that's our standard. But at the moment, just for this, I'll do 24, 44.1. And I'm going to convert it after about so it doesn't think about too many things while it's going. It's going to be an interleaved stereo file and it's going to be a WAV. I want WAV. I like WAV. WAV's good. And we're going to bounce it. So here we go. Have a listen. Ah, but first I have to call it something. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new folder called Bounces in capitals, so they can see it very clearly, is in our folder hierarchy, and I'm going to call it today's date, starting the year, the month, and the day. It's going to be called something like uh, festive 001. Right, okay, let's save. Listen. <laughs> 